Hello, hello, welcome to the next video. So today we're gonna continue talking about middle game. We already know that opening phase is about preparation of your shape. Also, I will tell you that end game will be quite simple because the objective will be quite simple. It will be a race to checkmate enemy king or assuring survival of our own king, yeah? But middle game, the problem with middle game is that the objective isn't so clear. There are many plans, many ideas you can have, but it is good to get the general idea of what would you want, yeah? So if we look at this basic position and think about it, our main objective should be to relocate those attacking pieces somewhere closer to the enemy king. Yeah, we know that this is the promotion zone. If we somehow manage to relocate our piece there, it's gonna become stronger. If we manage to promote our pawn, it's gonna become a strong token. So this is what we should concentrate on, right? There is two ways we can do that. One is by literally breaking through and being able to promote our piece over there. The second way is by exchanging. If we manage to exchange pieces, we're gonna have them in hand, which allows us to like teleport them anywhere we want, right? So there are those two ways, breaking through or exchanging. Now let's talk about the next step. Once you manage to promote your piece, let's say a rook, this piece will become the main force of your attack. It would be perfect if it like looks toward the enemy castle. It exerts some pressure on the enemy shape. This type of piece we're gonna call a pivotal piece because it's pivotal for your attack. Now, because you will have this base piece that puts the pressure, you will be able to combine it with other pieces, let's say in your hand, to break the castle or make it weaker, yeah? So this is gonna be called the castle breaking phase. We, our objective will be to somewhat exchange those pieces, like delete them from the board, or distract them away from the defense of the king. Both of them give us the same objective, yeah, weakening the enemy king. As the game will follow, they're gonna end up with, let's say, one general left, and this is where we will enter the end game. It will be much easier for us to find attacking moves because the number of defenders will be almost none, right? There is also an alternative way to break the castle, which is to drag the king out of the castle. But those different tactics we're gonna consider later when we're gonna be talking about this phase. Today we're gonna talk about the idea of sabaki. Sabaki is a Japanese word. I made a whole video about that word. If you wanna watch, I'm gonna put it in the description. Basically, it's about breaking in with that piece or exchanging it, as we talked in the beginning, yeah? And I'm gonna be using these examples from this book. Um, it's called Sabaki at a Glance from Nekomado Shop. If you guys would like to train that idea of breaking in or like exchanging your pieces, I recommend buying this book. It contains around 200 examples of practice problems of how you can sabaki your pieces, yeah? So even without knowing the exact opening lines, you can already train that feeling of how to break in using this book. I really recommend it. Anyway, back to the lesson. We're gonna look at two examples. One will be the swinging rook versus static rook. The other one will be double static rook. So this is the first example. We have a variation of both castle. The other side have a mino shape. This is 4-5 rook, this is static rook, right? And this side would like to attack. Yeah, we're ready. We have the whole castle ready. Uh, our silver is in front of our rook. This is called climbing silver. And this climbing silver want to climb higher. Yeah, we talked that the silver on the fifth row would exert more pressure on the enemy pieces than the silver on the fourth row. So we're going to push this pawn. We're going to start our attack with pawn push. It's a proverb as well. Start the attack with pawn sacrifice. And if enemy will be nice enough to retake it, we are able to advance our silver to that fifth row, right? Now let's say they're going to drop this pawn, trying to protect their bishop's head. But now look what happened. Our rook line is open. We're able to push this pawn. 
if they are nice to take, we can, you can see, break in. Yeah, we created our first promoted piece. We are quite happy with the result. If they escape, we can create a token over here, starting to up the pieces that belong to the enemy. This is what we call a successful break. -in. If they were, by the way, if they were to take the silver here, we also make a token, the same idea. Even though we, you know, throw away a whole silver, this token will have a huge value for us, uh, allow us to break in. Yeah, we talked about this activity. This rook will be active, uh, this rook won't be, and it is worth this exchange here. Eventually, we're gonna take the pieces back and able to uh, work that material disbalance into better for us. So yeah, breaking in is a very big deal. So I flip this position here. Uh, we are now defending. So we shouldn't be taking this pawn, yeah, because as we said, it's gonna enable our rook, enable our silver. We actually wanna stop them from entering the fifth row with their silver. So we're gonna move the rook toward the line of attack. Let's say they take this pawn. We're gonna retake with our silver, and they're gonna bring uh, the rook to the same fire to have more pressure. Yeah, this is where swinging rook counter attack comes to play. We're gonna push this pawn, and it seems like the silver is hanging, right? I told you, do not leave your pieces hanging. But actually, it's indirectly protected. If they were to take this silver. We are actually able to make a check. We have to take because it's a check, right? And look what happened. We just exchanged that silver for a rook. Which means we have this advantage, huge piece advantage, while kind of breaking their castle shape. It will be very good for us. So yeah, middle game is all about reading the intentions of your enemy and finding out what's the best move for them. Also asking yourself, what do I want? And then balancing those two. So here your enemy wants to take a free silver, but you say, nope, I have a counter up. So they have to play a different move based on our intentions. They have to take the bishop. Now we have to retake it with the rook because we need to continue the protection of the silver. And now if they drop the bishop, we drop the pawn. And look what happens. If they were to take the rook here, we managed to exchange our rook. We didn't break through, but now that we have this bishop in hand, we can relocate it anywhere we want, right? It actually benefits us. That rook that was here stuck, inactive, disappeared from the board, right? So this is the second way we can sabaki our pieces, uh, activate them into action, yeah? All right, how about another example? This one is perhaps the easiest one to explain. Um, enemy just drops a pawn here. Looks like we're losing a knight. And if we take it, we're gonna lose a silver. So this is unacceptable, yeah? We lose a free piece. Uh, losing a silver like this is unacceptable. We have to counter attack. Push here. Their silver is under attack. So if they take the knight, they lose the silver. We get a token to attack the rook. This is bad for them. So what if they take? Well, maybe you can find the next move. We then take the pawn. What's the difference? Well, now yes, we may lose the silver, but then we can break through and create a dragon. Achieving our middle game objective, yeah? Why is it better for us? We just lost the silver. Why is it better for us? Well, the rook is stuck here. Uh, their silver isn't actually active. We are able to pick up this lance next. So, yeah, this is not the worst outcome for us. Of course, if they were to take this silver, we're gonna take this. This is equal exchange of silvers. And um, But still, yeah, both sides would be able to promote. This is how we arrive at those late middle game positions. Yeah, both sides promoting their pieces. And the fight continues on. Okay, how about static group? I have this random uh, game, random position. Um, this side just developed their knight. They have a rook and silver next to each other. They have this very advanced pawn that exerts nice pressure on the enemy camp. 
Uh, we have the Minimum Castle, yeah. Helmet Castle, I think we called it. The enemy has this rook that's kind of floating over here. Also put some pressure on those lines. Their king is in the center. So it's kind of weird, but considering the attack is coming here, it's good that it's any, not any closer, yeah? So... The enemy is attacking. Now we're gonna block the rook. If the rook takes, I assume bishop drop will be quite nasty. So they're gonna move the god to help with the center protection. And I want you to notice that a god that has a bishop in hand. And we are searching for a ways to Sabaki, right? How do we locate that bishop in the enemy camp? So... If we sacrifice our lens like this, we create a space can be used here. And then we will try to delete some of the pressure and defend. Yeah, once our camp breaks, means enemy can eat all the pieces, we cannot allow that. Hence this weird bishop drop. But we still search for a way to activate our bishop, yeah? We force the enemy to move the silver away from the king and we created another space for another piece drop. And so, you see, even though none of our pieces got really promoted by uh, using the pieces in hand together to exert the pressure on the enemy camp, soon enough we will be able to counterattack together. In fact, in this game the rook was sacrificed so that it's in form of a gold, it's more useful piece. In the attack, again, the same idea, exchanging your inactive piece for something more active in your hand. This idea also was applied in this game. Of course, it, this position isn't that easy, but it is just to show you how those ideas work in actual games, yeah? So yeah, that's all for today. Remember, once more, yeah, remember our main objective in middle game is to somehow relocate our pieces into enemy camp so that we can have a pivotal piece to start breaking into enemy castle. As usual, the next video is gonna be on Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna continue with our middle game studies. I will see you there. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.